guys, it's me and today I'm here with my April wrap up. Can you believe the month is already over? I don't. So yeah, here we are. Also, I actually put on a shirt instead of just filming in my pajamas, hoping nobody would notice. So let's just start this wrap up off with stats. I didn't even make my wrap up just because I didn't feel like it. So this is gonna be a long video. So take a drink, stay hydrated, and let's go. So for the stats for this month, I read 14 books in total, of which I owned six. I have a problem, I know. Then for the TBR challenges, I read two books out of my comfort zone, six sequels, three new books, one TBR vet, and one TBR draw. One book I picked from a TBR draw. Then for star ratings, I have zero one stars, three two stars, five three stars, three four stars, and two five stars. So the three stars are taking over again love it then for authors i read 13 books by female authors and one book by male author which i haven't had it this cute in a while <laughs> then for age ranges i read eight ya books and six adult books and then for john wise we have a long list so here we go i read seven fantasies one historical fiction one contemporary three graphic novels one sci-fi and one non-fiction so yeah let's just get into those 14 books that I read. The first book that I read this month is The Mermaid by Christina Henry, which I ended up giving 35 stars. This book is about a mermaid who gets captured by a fisherman and fisherman lets her go, but they still like feel attracted to each other so the mermaid comes on land and has like this beautiful relationship with this fisherman until he dies. And after that a lot of myths surrounding her go around town and neighboring towns until one day this myth actually comes to P.T. Burnham and his crew and yeah they send out somebody to convince her to become an attraction at this museum. I read this book because I've been meaning to get into Christina Henry for a while because I've just heard a lot of good things about the books and I've kind of been nervous about her because she m mainly writes horror retellings of fairy tales and I'm still working up the courage to get into horror so I thought I'd read this one first because this one isn't a horror it's just a historical fan fantasy and I thought that that genre was more into like my comfort zone so I thought let's start here to know if I actually like Christine Henry's writing and then get into a genre I'm comfortable with but I don't think this was the right place to start because a lot a lot happened in this book and I just think it was quite boring but that's just the plot I feel like writing wise I really liked it the writing really worked for me it kind of brought the story to life and it felt a little bit like fairy tale-ish and like mystical and I really liked it. it fit with the story very well and also really like the character of the mermaid which I forgot her name because I'm terrible but <laughs> I really like that character and how, how she was done so that makes me excited to read more books by Christina Henry. Then the next book I read is The Other Berlin Girl by Philippa Gregory which I ended up giving two to five stars. This follows Mary Berlin who in this book is the youngest Berlin sister which wasn't the actual case but well <laughs> it follows her courtship with Henry VIII as well as Anne's but of course through Mary's eyes and yeah Wanna know the reason that I read this? Six. <laughs> I have been obsessed with six for like the past month and a half. I don't know exactly when I started listening to it, but I just, I've been really obsessed with it. And <laughs> Boleyn is my favorite queen in the show. So I wanted to learn more about her and I've also been wanting to make my way through Philippa Gregory books, at least this series, because I read The White Queen a couple of years ago and I actually quite enjoyed it. It wasn't necessarily my favorite, but I quite enjoyed that. And uh, since then I've been meaning to get through the series, but these books have been intimidating, so I haven't. So what was the perfect way to push myself, push myself, <laughs> to push myself to continue on into her Tudor novels as well as to learn more about Anne Boleyn? thought that was this book, is it the case? If right now this has a lot of historical inaccuracies and it's apparently based off of a lot of myths around Anne Boleyn that are, that a lot of historians have already like disproven it can truly disprove it but this widely believed to not be true and yeah also just like 
they can marry the oldest, the youngest, well, that wasn't the case, it was also a thing. But just, they can, aside to historical inaccuracies and just looking at this book as if these people were never real people. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how I'm looking at this book as I'm reviewing it because I don't know enough about real historical context. So, this is still 35 stars, didn't really like it, I thought this again was a book that in which not a lot of whole lot happened and I feel like that was because of the perspective we followed I feel like Mary wasn't really a part of like the action at the time it just felt a bit boring and like we were outside of the action that we were just sometimes just being like told little bits about the action afterwards it kind of felt boring and repetitive at certain points and then also just like Mary biggest hypocrite I've ever read about honestly <laughs> it was so frustrating to me because I feel like Mary had like this holier than thou mentality a lot and that made her such a hypocrite. And then I read Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare, which is the first book in the Last Hours trilogy, which is a spin of trilogy with the Fellow Devices. And I gave this book five, five stars and made a hour long <laughs> video on this book, which I don't recommend you go watch because I think it's a terrible video. But this book I can't really talk to you all about because it was spoiled in Fellow Devices, but I'll just say that this follows the children of the characters in Fallen Devices in London as a new threat comes to London in the Shadow Hunter world. I was a bit hesitant to go into this book because I wasn't the biggest fan of the Fallen Devices and I thought this would follow the same trend as it, you know, was a spin off of that. But I ended up actually really liking this. I really like the plot. I know. <laughs> actually, most of the people I've seen reviews are mostly talking about like the characters and the relationship between the characters rather than the plot, but I just want to talk about the plot because. Yes, it's not like the strong suit of the series, but I think it is a very fun plot and I had a lot of fun like theorizing like certain bits about it, which you'll definitely see in a lot because I'm crazy about my theories, but I was white about some of them, so there you go. <laughs> I did a lot of fun with that and I think this is a very interesting setup for this series and I'm excited to see what it's going to continue on into. But I personally didn't really have that much of connections with characters. I mainly connected to Matthew, who has become my fav my second favorite Shadowhunter character, just under Magnus Bane, just above his own father, Henry Fairchild. Not Henry, not Henry Fairchild, Henry Bradwell, usually is what I call him. And I don't know how it happened. I love Matthew with all my heart, and I also really like Anna, but she's not really that part, that big of a part in the series, and I wish she was a bigger part of the series. But I really like the group moments and I like seeing these characters interact with each other even though like I don't really have an individual connection with most of them. Then in the next book I read I'm just going to briefly talk about it, and that's An Illustrated History of Notable Shadowhunters and Denizens of the Town World by Cassandra Clare illustrated by Cassandra Jean. This is just a fun little character guide of Shadowhunter characters for the... wait. <laughs> for all the rest is the last hours, the mono instruments and the dark artifices. And then... Tales of the Shadow and the Academy is also separately mentioned in it. <laughs> I just thought this was a fun thing to read if you're like a huge Shadow and the fan. I highly recommend you read this because there's just some fun anecdotes in there that just make you laugh out loud. It does have some inaccuracies when it comes to the casters from the last hours, so Cordelia and Alistair, because I know those two characters changed a lot between when Cassandra Flair first started the series and now when it's actually out, and this book was published somewhere in between that. <laughs> The next book I read this month is Frostbite by Michelle Mead, which is the second book in the Vampire Academy series, and Vampire Academy is about Wes Hathaway, who is a vampire, who is, which is a mix between a vampire and a human, and basically their purpose kind of is to be guardians to the Mori, which Mori, Mori are kind of like the royalty of the vampires, they are immor mortal vampires with elemental magic. And they need to be protected from the Strigoi, which are your typical vampire shit. And we follow us that way, who, like I said before, is a vampire, which means she is a bitch because she's, she's a guardian in training. And she, her best friend is Lisa, who is a Mori. And two years before this novel starts, they run away from the school for vampires. <laughs> Obviously, Vampire Academy. So, uh, because Woj just didn't feel safe there at all, so they run away. And try to survive in the real world for two years, and basically a novel picks up in after those two years when guardians from the school manage to capture Rose and Lisa to take them back to the academy. I watched the movie adaptation for the first book 
also in its month. So watch my movie wrap up if you want to know my thoughts on that because that was a disaster show. But <laughs> this book, I really loved. I didn't say my story for this. I gave this five to five stars. I just, oof, I love this. They just have a great balance between lighter moments and darker moments, mainly being the first half being like lighter, but also like having that thread there. Well, the second half is darker and like X on that dread in the first half. And it's so mind blowingly good. So the only reason why I didn't give Vampire Game, which is the first book five first stars, is because I felt like in the beginning it felt a bit cliche. This book didn't have that. I just I really love the uniqueness of this world and these vampires because I feel like vampires is a trope that has done a lot and very often it's like somewhat the same. And I feel like this is just done in such a unique way. And also I really like the elemental, elemental magicness, which usually isn't something I'm the biggest fan of, which I know in popular opinion. So I also really like that. I really love these characters. They're so much fun. And I love their friendships and relationships and the romance. One of the romances in this book, very inappropriate, but like I can't stop myself from feeling it. And it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, love this book. Basically, pick up the series if you haven't because I feel like it stands the test of time really well. After Frostbite, I immediately continued into Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Meade, which is the third book in the Vampire Academy series because I couldn't stop myself. I literally couldn't. It was... <laughs> it was pretty late. I was like, no, I'm gonna continue reading it. I was like, sure, let's do that. <laughs> let's not be self-destructive. So... <laughs> Yeah, I read this, but out of five stars, again, this is my favorite in the series so far, it just, this was very high stakes. So you're gonna see her pajama pants. That's how much I feel I've been into this. This was very high stakes. There was a lot of things happening. There's this that name blew my absolute mind, and I really needed to stop myself from also immediately continuing on to the fourth book, because I still had books to read of my TBR, because I barely had read any of them. And we were already halfway through the month, more than halfway through the month, probably, I don't remember. And I was just like, oh my god. What is this? Oh my god. Okay, so yeah. I'm obsessed with this series. Hi, I'm only halfway through and I'm obsessed with it. And yeah. Then the next book I read is Last Girls by Dimitra Brodsky. I'm so glad I don't know pronounced that. But I gave this book three out of five stars and I received a galley of this book to not galley. And this is about three sisters. Only, f only follow one perspective, but basically it's about three sister and we follow the perspective of the oldest one and their mother is a huge prepper and they move around a lot until one day they move in like the secluded like preppers community which is a little bit culty but like it's not officially a cult but like it's a little bit culty. We also get throughout a perspective of a guy living with his mother and his three sisters have been kidnapped in the past and they're trying to find them. You can see where this is gonna go, right? I don't no, I don't think this book is necessarily bad, I just don't think it really was that memorable because the characters were pretty flat in my opinion and then I feel like the story was very predictable. Well, <laughs> it took me like two chapters from the perspective of this dude to realize we were reading from a different perspective because it wasn't really indicated at all. And once I realized what was happening, I was like, oh, I know where this is gonna go. Like, it's, it's not so difficult to figure out. Um, at least I think so. Next, I read Eat and Love Yourself by Sweeney Boo, which I gave 45 stars. This is another guy I got from Night Alley. This is a graphic novel about a girl who's plus size and is kind of has issues around her body image. And one day, she, in like this gas station, I believe it is, she sees in this advertisement for these candy bars that, like, I said that if you eat from them, like, you always have to love yourself, which is why the book is called Eat and Love Yourself. She bites one of those candy bars, and each of the times she bites into it, she gets flashbacks to times she was dealing very badly with her body dysmorphia, and also seeing how those other people around her saw her and, like, stuff like that. And, yeah, basically a story of loving yourself and body acceptance. I think... <laughs> I just, I felt like I was missing a little bit from this book. I don't know exactly what, but I just didn't think it was perfect for me. It also felt like also very fast moving, a little bit more fast than I wanted to, maybe. But I really love the art style, and me character is so cute. <laughs> like, the way she's illustrated, she's like so cute, and I, mm, I love it so much. This thing is just a fun, nice story about self-acceptance, and 
that's it. <laughs> then I read Big Mushy Happy Limb by Sarah Anderson, which I ended up giving 3 out of 5 stars. I <laughs> reason I read this is because I was feeling a little bit slumpy and the thing that helps me when I'm feeling slumpy is finishing a book. But that isn't always easy <laughs> when you're reading like big books, you know? So I decided, well, like usually what I do is read a graphic novel and I saw this on script and I read the first one. So I thought I just finished the trilogy. Then I figured out there's a fourth book coming out. So I'm not finishing anything, but oh well. This is just a collection of like small little comics by Sarah Anderson. And I'll like stand along like each page is a different thing. And they are about life <laughs> and anxiety and life with anxiety and stuff just you know daily stuff and it's, i think they're relatable they're fun and that's it next book i read is Horning cats by sarah anderson which is the third book in the series which i gave two out of five stars again like, i kind of have the same thoughts on this as the second one they're relatable they're fun i do remember seeing a lot of these like online so some of them weren't even that much of a surprise but yeah. The next book I read is Renegades by Melissa Meyer, which I literally gave in 2 out of 5 stars. This is a very reflective book, I'm so sorry if you're gonna be blinded. But this book is basically it takes place in this world, which in this world, this is okay, I have to explain this world's history. So <laughs> it's very much kind of like our own world, but like this this town and in uh, kind of all over the world but we just follow this history of this one town so that's what I'm going to explain to you but it is one town <laughs> there have been living people with superpowers but they have been like oppressed by regular people because people don't like people that are more powerful than them the truth so there were the anarchists who actually took over and made it more acceptable for people to have superpowers and but also kind of ruined the world, not really the world, the town, and there was ooh, a lot of crime, a lot of poverty, and just not great times. And then the renegades took over, <laughs> who are now called superheroes, and get people with powers, and they are trying to make the world a better place, but also kind of failing at it, if you think about it. And we follow two perspectives. One is from a girl who is the cousin, like niece of the main guy from the anarchists and her parents died one day and she was very much hoping for the renegades to be able to like come in save the day and um, they didn't so since then she's ever really been really been holding a grudge against the renegades and also just like you know her uncle being the head of the anarchists also has a deal in that as well and so she's a part of the anarchists and then because there's not a lot of anarchists left and the renegades know like a lot about the anarchists besides the existence of our main character they kind of feel like it's, they have an unfair advantage and they can never like really take over again so the main character kind of volunteers to start working with the renegades and be a double spy kind of and then we follow a guy who, who is the son of one of the final members of the renegades and is the renegade himself but he's also experimenting with superpowers as well so yeah and they meet and become friends and they both start to realize that their side might not be perfect but and they kind of start to see like the gray area and all of it and i think that's it's the thing that's where this book twice and exploring the gray area between everything recognizing that my system is not entirely correct but neither was yours and I'm really excited to see where the series is gonna go and try to find that middle ground, hopefully. And yeah, I also really like these characters and the side characters also a lot of fun on both sides. I feel like just a fun cast of characters. But overall, I just felt like not a whole lot happened in this book. Just, I don't know. I <laughs> kind of felt bored a little bit with this book. And I might have been influenced by the slump I was in at the time, but also at the same time, I don't really think so. Because none of the other books are this month are. But <laughs> yeah. I do really love the ending and I'm excited to, to see where we're going to continue onwards. <laughs> the next book, but it's not a superhero book, that's The Unstoppable Lost Built on Hope by Sam Max, which I think I'm giving 2 out of 5 stars, it's not a galley got from that galley. This is about Nadja who is the Unstoppable Wasp, but she is also the founder of Girls, which is a program at... 
It's just for teenage girls to do science and inventions and better the world. And they are currently working with Stark Industries to do local things to improve the environment. We have my character who is working on that. Also, you know, her duties of being a wasp, dealing with bipolar disorder. Just like a lot of shit going on and she has a hard time, you know, scheduling everything. So she gets gifted a Vera, I think it's called, by her stepmother. And Vera is kind of a personal assistant, but like a robot. <laughs> not, a, not a robot, I think it's more like AI. AI. Can't talk, I'm so sorry. And she quickly... And like this thing was working for her, it's reminding her to take her medication and like keep on track and schedule and everything. But the dangerous thing that's happening is that she is also starting to get closer to the developer of Vera and her friends don't really trust this person. I don't like this book that much. Again, main character I hate it. I hated this character so much. So hypocritical. Again, like what's the thing with hypocritical main characters? And like nobody calls her out on it as well. Nobody calls her out on a hypocrisy. It's... I don't mind the likable character as long as the book recognizes that the character is unlikable. This book didn't do that. And another thing this book did was it just had like random, like not yet science facts throughout it, which were very long descriptions of things that were happening, but then it was like, you know, science. But it had nothing to do with the plot. It had no influence on our knowledge of what was going on in the story. And I feel like it like, over explained those things. But then at the same time, there's I feel like this book relies a lot on having a previous knowledge of this particular set of the Marvel Universe. Which I think is a bit weird. And yeah, I do think... I also was expecting more of like a girl power moment once, you know, the girl scientist was introduced. I was like, oh, we're gonna have a great girl squad moment, but we didn't really. So that was also very disappointing. Then the next book I read, because I just complained about learning about science. That's weird. But <laughs> the next book I read is Physica by Livia Sierra. This is a book about physics. It's non-fiction. I read a book by this author. This author, by the way, is actually a scientific comedian. It's all official title is, I think. And it's pretty well known in Flanders. And it... I feel like the TV program he makes, and it's all about science, but it's all in a very accessible way, and I really like that. And he previously wrote a book about DNA, which I was obsessed with, because I, if there's, I'm not interested in science at all, except genetics. Genetics, I think, is like the most interesting shit in the world. <laughs> so, but yeah, I really liked how things were explained in that book, so I thought maybe I'd also like this. Like, I ended up doing this for the five stars, so I did. I really think that the strong suit of this art, like him as an author is being able, or just like as a person in science, is <laughs> to be able to explain everything, like the most difficult concepts in such a way that's understandable for everyone. I didn't think this eventually is just like a greatest hits of physics, I would call it. So there were some subjects I wasn't really that interested in. Others I really want a book on. <laughs> and I'm just like, expand, please. I want to know more about this. <laughs> the last book I read, this one is The Iron Queen by Julie Fidel, which is the third book in the Iron Face series. I ended up giving this 2 out of 5 stars. It's my least favorite out of the series so far. This series starts off with Megan, who is about to turn 16 years old. And a lot of strange things are happening around her, which is like kind of like brushing them off. Until one day her little brother attacks, violently attacks their mother. And she's like, what the fuck is this? You're not my brother. That's, my brother would never act like that. And then her best friend walks in and he immediately recognizes the situation as her brother being a changeling, not actually her brother. And more reveals get made as the main character is actually the daughter of the <laughs> Faye Kale of the Stomach Horde and the legitimate daughter, I might add. And or her best friend is actually a fae that was sent down into the human realm to be able to protect her and keep her from going to the fae realm. And now they're going to the fae realm to basically retrieve her brother. This is the third book, so we're way farther than that. A lot of shit has happened. Yeah, like I said, this is my least favorite in the series. I just feel like this wasn't really that eventful again until the ending. I really like the ending. I really like where this lives off, and I'm excited to see what I was going to continue on into in the last book and how things are going to wrap up 
Ooh, but I just feel like the majority of the book I didn't really feel invested or interested. I absolutely hate this main character so much, but if you've been watching my past wrap ups, you know that. It's so frustrating and so dumb. But thinks she's smarter than everyone in the world. And also the smartest character in this book. And the most rational character in the book. Is a cat. A cat. Like. Very. Cat is very similar to the Shashai cat. Kind of. Comparable to that. At least like the smartest character in this book. He's a cat. For goodness sake. There's royalty in this book. You think they knew about something. No. They're dumb as fuck as well. But. Yeah. Main character is the dumbest bitch in this place though. I read the back. The description of the fourth book because this is a combination of the third and fourth book i read the back and it seems like the fourth book is going to be mainly to the perspective of another character or like at least partially like dual perspective but i think it's all throughout another person's perspective i'm really excited for that because i'm done with megan so much <laughs> here's all the books i read in the month of april besides a couple because i read some ebooks and i can't hold ebooks obviously let me know in the comments down below what, if you read any of these books, what you thought of them, so we can discuss them, as well as what are some of the books you read in the month of April. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Good.